In this last chapter, I will show you some tricks and some tools that will be useful for you to improve your animation. One of the most important tips is to share your work and ask for feedbacks. Here are some improvements I've done after Luciano gave me some useful feedback. The first one was regarding the feet. He told me that whenever you run, the faster you run, the closer your feet get to the center line. So I've offset the position of the feet during the run to be more centered. And also he explained me that the foot tend to curve inward and then outward on the push. So here it's very subtle because I've used the foot roll mechanism to do so, but I've inputted some of this movement. His second critique was about the position of the torso. I didn't have any back to front movement. And he explained me that from side view, the torso should make a small circle while pushing forward and then when it's in the air it's getting slowly back before it re-push forward. So it's not really easy to see here but there are ways to display this in the viewport. You can display some playback of the bones by going into the rig properties, go to ghost and increase the range. As you can see it's writing some kind of onion skin for the bone position and if you click selected only you will only see the bone that is currently selected while the range is just about the number of frames you are using. We can also display the path of the curve by going into the motion path option and click the calculate button while you have the selected bone activated. This will output you a curve that is showing the path of the bone and you will also see the different keyframe number. This can, this can be very handy whenever you want to uh, check out the curvature of your movement, which is a very important thing in animation. If you edit your animation, you will be able to update the curve by clicking the Update Path button. Unfortunately, by default, there isn't any option to edit the path directly in the 3D view, but maybe there is an add-on around that do this. One of the real power of the animation curve is that it really helps you to completely change the behavior of your character or of your animation with a few clicks. If I offset the base position of the torso, for example, I will have a completely different look to my animation. And I can also rotate it by simply taking all the world curve and move it on the y-axis. It will change all the values of the curve. It's very handy whenever you have to update the position of your character, even if uh, your animation is already done. And you can also input other rotation or position value to give another stance to your character. You will sure have to refine your animation later on, but if you have to show this to someone, or if someone asks you for a big update, that could save you a lot of time. That's gonna be it for this run cycle tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I'd love to see what you will achieve with this tutorial. So don't hesitate to post your animation on the Blender Artist thread or on Twitter, following the links in the description of the video and on the Gumroad page. A big thanks to Luciano Munoz for providing the rig and a big thanks to you if you are watching this. I'll see you very very soon.